Kathy Sheen is the mayor of Albany, New York, the capital of that state. It's also a sanctuary city, and she joins us tonight. Mr. Mayor, nice to see you. Good to see you. So um, I, I just I can't resist asking about the Disneyland video that we just showed. People here illegally blocking entry to Americans in an amusement park because they're demanding citizenship and free stuff. What? What country would put up with that other than ours? Well, listen, this is a country that values free speech and the right to protest. And these are young people who feel that they were given a promise and that DACA was a way for them. These are young people who were brought over here as children, not by their choice, uh, as a way for them to have a pathway to citizenship. And so that this is a great you. country in that we allow people the freedom to why express themselves. Why would we themselves. allow foreigners? Why, by the way, why would you want someone in your country? who's not grateful to be here, who's demanding of American citizens the right to vote and get benefits. Don't you want people who are grateful to be here and want to add? You know, every immigrant that I've ever met is grateful to be here. That doesn't mean that they're not going to stand up for their rights. And, you know, I joined well, thousands of people across this country in protests that happened on Saturday from people who were born and raised in this country and who've been here for generations. That is one of the hallmarks of our great society. But they're not... Americans, these but, people. But they illegally. have a voice. They, they have a law. right to a voice. Just because you're not from here doesn't mean the Constitution doesn't apply to you. If you're here that's illegally, that's well, well, well no, settled it's not law. Actually, if you're, if you're, <laughs> if you broke our law to get here, you don't have the rights that an American citizen have. Where, where do those rights come from then? So, you know, when when you are here, you have constitutionally protected rights, and I think that when we look to polarize this conversation by pointing these uh, people. Who who are here, brought here by their parents, without their without their choice, and demonizing them, we really turn the conversation the to an to us Disney. versus whoa. them. Whoa, 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 and whoa, so whoa, 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 slow down. They block the entrance to Disneyland. Okay, I didn't do that. They did that. Do they bear any responsibility for doing and that? And there are Americans who use their right to free speech to block entrances, to shut down roads, and but to protest are, things in this country. Do you see and whether you were born here or you weren't no, no. born it's here, not a matter of being you born have here. that right. No, no, it's a matter of citizenship. Citizenship is meaningful to most Americans. They think it, it, you're different if you're a citizen. And they want to be on a path a, to citizenship. Okay. These are young people who are working hard and who no, have worked no, hard. These are people who, in the middle of be a, a weekday, to, were blocking Disneyland. So don't tell me they were working hard. So a new poll by a new Harvard poll shows that four out of five Americans, 81 percent of Americans, want less legal immigration, a lot less. Where were their interests? Where are their interests in the modern Democratic Party? Four out of five Americans of all political parties want less legal immigration. Are you aware of that? Well, and I think that that's really a stunning number, and it demonstrates that we need to do a better job of communicating how important immigration is to our cities and to our country. And, you know, you look at a city like Albany, New York. We have an aging population. A lot of the growth that's happening in our city is happening because of immigration. The number one complaint I get from employers is that they can't find people to work. And so we've got a real workforce development challenge in the city of Albany mm -hmm. and in the capital region. And immigration is helping to fuel that workforce. I wonder, though, I mean, so, for example, I was just looking um, at stats provided by the Albany School District. And um, I think you've said before that your city is about 40 percent foreign born. No, no, no. It's about 11 percent foreign, foreign born. But we have okay. about 40 languages spoken 40 languages. In our my, my, my mistake. But that's a pretty high number. So in 2017, of eighth graders in Albany schools, 0% qualified, 0%, according to your stats, qualified in math. Well, so that seems to me like a crisis much larger than anything you're describing. The, the and challenge I'm wondering is, where, I'm the wondering where the outrage is. Yeah, the challenges in our school district um, existed before we had uh, the immigration that I'm we sure have that's now. Right. Oh, I'm, not, I'm not saying so, that, but I'm just saying, like, why, and, I wonder and, why I've never heard you as outraged about that as you are about, I don't know, enforcing federal immigration law. That seems like a crisis. Would you agree that's a crisis? Zero percent that, of eighth graders? Well, that that's absolutely right. And that is why, you know, that's a, another whole conversation we can we can have about the work that we are doing to partner with our school district and to ensure that we're turning that around. Um, and by bringing together our institutions of higher education, our business community, uh, you know, health care, so that we and we are addressing those issues. Do you think but, that bringing in more students who don't have English as a first language helps or hurts that? I think that when we when you look at what we are doing with our new 
language learners that we are um, Make, having interventions that are helping them to so it, it's a problem that you schools. need to solve. You just conceded it's a problem. You're trying to make the problem better, but it is a problem when you import people who don't speak English as a first language. Why would you add that burden to schools where zero percent of eighth graders are proficient in math? Zero percent. Well, first of all, that number is a little misleading because of how the testing is done. But that's you, your if, number. I, but if I didn't you make if you pass the region exam, you didn't have to take the test that you're talking about. But in any event, the when when you look at the challenges that exist in any school district, in any urban school district, um, it's incumbent upon uh, the school district and the, the stakeholders in that community to ensure that we are doing what we can so that these children are successful. But does and we are seeing incredible success. Uh, it, it doesn't, I, I haven't seen those. I, I'm sure you're seeing some success. My only, it's really simple. I'm not arguing against all immigrants. I'm not arguing against your schools. I'm just saying there's a crisis in your schools, obviously. Does importing more immigrants make it better? And you've conceded, no, it doesn't. It's a problem well, that we need to solve. Well, I don't, I don't see so it my as making is, it better or worse. I see it as um, a, an asset to the city to see that we have the opportunity to continue to grow, to continue to have economic development So what's development the right number then? Occur. If bringing in more people from third world countries makes Albany a better city, is good for your schools, it's, it's good for your economy, What's the right number? How many people do you think need to come from foreign countries to Albany for you to get really rich? So, you know, this is uh, where the federal government needs to step up and decide what immigration policy is going to be. That happens at the federal no, no, no. level. Ask the mayor, though. You're and making so the case in, in, that they make your city more right, prosperous. But and I'm saying, I will what's say, a good number? I, I, will av I would advocate to ensure that we have enough people on H-1B visas. We are um, the, we have a, one of the largest semiconductor manufacturing facilities right. in, in the capital region. GE's R&D center is there. Um, I worked for a medical device manufacturer. We used H-1B visas to bring right. in We're not actually talking about H-1B so, visas. It was a totally different category. Right. We're talking so, about poor people like the DACA recipients who are not H-1B people. They're people with lower than average educational attainment. And my simple question was, if more of poor people makes your city richer, what's the good number of poor people to bring? Look, I, I'm not talking about statistics and numbers. I'm talking oh, about the oh. people who are there. And I'm talking about ensuring that we continue to be okay. a welcoming community for everyone. Okay, well, that's a, different, that's a different goal. But I thought you were saying it made the city richer. And I just am skeptical. That's it. But well, I think I, it's helping us to, it's okay. definitely helping us us to grow and to fill a workforce need that exists. Right. Well, thank you. Mayor, it's nice to see you. I appreciate you doing that.